Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Winnipeg Centre. Thank you, Madam Speaker. As I rise to speak on Bill S-224 today to amend the Criminal Code Trafficking in Persons, once again, Winnipeg has received horrific news of once again the murder of Indigenous women in our community. Morgan Harris, 39. Mercedes Myron, 26. Rebecca Contois, 24. And one woman yet to be identified. Three additional charges to Jeremy Sabicki, who now seems to be the latest serial killer of Indigenous women, girls, and two spirit in our community. So I would like to offer my love, support, and deepest sympathies to the latest families and communities that have been affected by the ongoing genocide against Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit. Something that has been acknowledged particularly in my city of Winnipeg Centre as ground zero for the crisis of murdered and missing Indigenous women and girls because their lives were precious. They were loved. They were mothers, they were sisters, they were aunties, and they were daughters. And I don't know how many times I have risen in this house to speak about the urgency, the dire urgency of the crisis that we face as targets in this country. Our lives seem to be of no consequence, whether there are our life or loss of life in this country that espouses to be a beacon for human rights, human rights that have been deprived from Indigenous women, girls, and two spirits since the first contact when exploitation started. So as we debate today in this House a bill to strengthen protections for women, girls, and to spirit around sex trafficking for all women, we must acknowledge when we talk about human trafficking in Canada that certain groups are disproportionately impacted. In fact, the Canadian Women's Foundation noted 51% of traffic girls were or had been part of the child welfare system, something that has been named the new residential school because there's more kids in the child welfare system now than at the height of residential schools. Indigenous girls, young people, and two-spirit. The fact that they noted that 50% of traffic girls and 51% of trafficked women were Indigenous. Over half, over half of individuals that are trafficked, 51% of 
are indigenous women because there is an ongoing genocide. Something we are reeling with again in my beautiful community of Winnipeg, an ongoing genocide of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls and two-spirit. And human trafficking is just one part of this ongoing genocide. Let's not forget about what we have recently found out. The second serial killer in recent history who has targeted our women because there is a normalized violence and genocide that is occurring in this company with country with piecemeal approaches by government that sends a very clear message to indigenous women girls and two spirit including the zero budgetary allocation in the 2022 by 2022 budget that this is not of top urgency and priority. Now, I know we're here to debate the current bill, but I would be remiss at this very critical time if I didn't take the opportunity to call on all members of the House to stand together, whether it be about human trafficking or the murder and genocide of, on, of Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit in this country, to stand in solidarity together. This is a human rights crisis. This is a life and death crisis. To stand together in nonpartisanship to work together to ensure that Indigenous women and girls and Two-Spirit in this country can finally be safe. Because if we fail to do so, once again, as we debate this bill, the latest murders in my community and I want to let you know, a beautiful community of wonderful people as a result of an individual who targeted Indigenous women. If we do not stand in nonpartisanship, this genocide will continue. I am calling for urgent help. I am calling for resources. I am calling on the government to come to my community and meet with the families of murdered and missing Indigenous women and girls and come up with an urgent response. I am calling on all members of this House to not politicize this genocide and just provide the resources and support that is needed to end this crisis of violence. Every day, that this is politicized. Every day that we wait, we lose another life. I had the privilege of speaking to one of the family members of the latest, of one of the w late women who have been identified in the latest crisis. And families deserve justice. The women, their spirits, they deserve justice. Our communities, deserve justice, and we have a right to be safe. We have a right to be respected. We have a right to be honored. And that needs to happen today. Thank you, Madam Speaker.